Good morning and welcome back to the channel. I'm up at the cabin today by myself and it is finally winter. It is minus five degrees Celsius today, which I know probably doesn't sound very cold, but tonight we are supposed to get down to minus 16 and I think the snow is finally here to stay. It is a lovely day out today and I thought today would be a great day to take you on a tour of the cabin. I know we have a video of somewhat of a tour, however, we've never actually explained anything about the cabin. So that is what I'm here to do today is take you on a full tour of the cabin and kind of just like explain the setup that we have here. I've already made a fire, so the cabin is on its way to warming up and I just have to clean off the solar panels and once that's done, we can get started with the tour. So let's start right back at the very beginning. This cabin is set on 25 acres and we are not hooked up to any utilities. This is completely off grid and it also is dry, which means we have to bring our own water in. There's no water here. So we heat with wood, which is why I had to get a fire going right away because it's as cold inside as it is outside. Our electricity comes from solar, which is something that we've added recently, but we'll get more into that when we go inside. There is no running water here, which means we use an outhouse and we are not tied into the grid in any way. The cabin is sitting on 25 acres and we are not on a residential road. Basically you drive on a road which is maintained by the town and then off of that road we have our own road which leads us to where the cabin is which is in the middle of the forest. So I think we drive I would say maybe half a kilometer into the forest and then you end up with the cabin. So the maintenance done driving from the residential road that's owned by the town into the cabin is done strictly by us. So if we come up here after a heavy snowfall, the road is not plowed and we, we usually can't drive in. I want to show you a quick walk around around the outside of the cabin and a bit around the property first and then we'll head inside and I'll explain more inside. This is the covered porch and it goes around three sides of the cabin. So it does not go around the back, but it does go around the side, the front, and then the other side. Mostly what we use this area for is storing wood. And the wood that we store up here is what's burned inside over the winter. Up on the walls here, you can see we have all of the antlers off of all the deer that we've gotten while we're here. So every year when we get our deer, we put the rack on the wall. Obviously if it's a doe, you're not putting a rack on the wall. So this is just like a small snippet of the deer that we've got here. Back over here, we've got the barbecue and then we have the two burner stove. So the stove we use when we're finishing our maple syrup, which you've seen in our previous videos if you've tuned into the channel before. So we usually bring this over to where the sap evaporator is and we set it up and we use that to finish our syrup. We also use this two burner stove here when we're doing chicken stock or canning things. We like to leave it here on the deck if it's raining. If it's not raining or snowing, we'll put it down in the ground. I know there have been a lot of questions about why this is so close to the wood and how it's a safety hazard. This wood is wet. This stuff back here is not going to be burned this year. It's very wet wood. We don't leave this two burner stove unattended. So it's not like we light it, we leave it by the wood and we walk away. We're very cautious about what we're doing here because we don't want to have any accidents. But for anyone that's mentioned that, thank you for your concern. If we go around the other side, I'll show you where our solar system is and what else we have set up on the other side. Over here we just have more wood set up so usually what's right here and right here in front of the door this is the stuff we'll burn first the stuff at the end and on the side and around this corner is stuff that's burned next so we always burn what's right in front of the door first and we actually have had a few people ask why we have our wood on the porch and it's really just for convenience the door is right here so we don't have to go far to bring the wood inside we have had a few people ask why we put it here if it blocks the view in the front of the cabin we never have the wood stacked all the way up to the top maybe at the very end we might but never right in front so we always have a good view of what's going on out here and it's really honestly just for convenience so we don't have to go very far 
probably a little bit more than a bush cord up here on the porch and that'll be enough to burn through the winter. Over here we have our solar system and I am not very good with this kind of stuff. So I'll leave the specs for the system down in the description because I actually don't know a whole lot about this. What I do know is that in this container down here is where the batteries are stored. So this is where we keep the batteries. They're just down here in the bank. So this is something new to us. We've actually never had solar here before. This is new probably in the last year or two years. Before we had no power whatsoever here. This solar system provides us with more than enough power for all the things we need here. We've actually never run out of power at all ever being here. So you can see here the green light shows which percentage we're charged up to. So right now we're at 90%. And that's because the panels were covered in snow. So actually before I uncovered the panels, we were sitting around like 60%. And this thing charges incredibly fast because it's only been probably 15 minutes since I cleared the panels off and we've already gone up to 90%. So this will be fully charged in no time. So this corner looks a little bit messy. We store all of our propane tanks here, the full ones and the empty ones. This is just the smoker that we use sometimes. Primarily it stays up at the cabin. We've brought it home a couple times, but for the most part it stays here. Over here is where we have all of our propane tanks. So the big tank here has a line going inside and this does our stove inside. This is also something that we have not had the entire time the cabin's been here. So before we didn't have a stove at all, we had a little camping Coleman stove and that's what we used to cook on. So having the stove with the oven is very helpful and it's also really nice at hunting season because we can cook full meals here. The other propane tanks down here, there's another line going inside. So this line actually does propane lights inside, which is what we upgraded from after having only lanterns. So we ran copper inside and we had some little propane lanterns, which was super handy. And I remember the day that we got the propane lights, how it was amazing. Like we had lights inside. So instead of having to pump up those little lanterns and hang them up on pieces of wire. So we had lights inside having the propane lights was like a huge, huge step up for us. So going from lanterns to propane lights and now to solar lights, it's wild because we can just go in and flick a switch and there's power right away. Whereas before we'd have to come in, fill up the lanterns, pump them up to get some pressure in it and then light it. And Oh my God, if those little, sock things on the lantern they just fall off and disintegrate it's not things that we have to worry about anymore we do still have those as a backup but having the solar and being able to just lift a light and have power inside has been amazing i should mention too that the propane also does the fridge so we have a propane fridge inside which again we've never had before this is new usually we use a cooler and just leave our stuff outside but we now have a fridge which primarily just gets used at hunting season if i'm being honest because we bring food for the whole week sometimes in the summer we might use it if it's hot outside it's just better to keep the stuff cold inside with the fridge plugged in than out here in the cooler and it also eliminates things coming up onto the deck so let's go this way and see what else we've got over here is the outhouse so this is where we go to the bathroom there's a bucket in there, a toilet seat, and a whole lot of spiders when the weather is warm. It's not fancy, it's really just somewhere to go to the bathroom. Inside we have a different sort of toilet thing that I'll show you, but we do not use that for all of our bathroom needs. Most of our bathroom needs are met outside in the outhouse. The one that's inside is strictly used for nighttime bathroom breaks, that's it. This bathroom is where most of the action takes place. This is one of the trails that leads us to where all of our buckets are tapped. You can see far off in the distance, there's some orange paper on some of the trees, and those are just marking all the trees that we tapped. For anyone that's watched and followed along from the beginning, you'll know that we had a huge storm roll through here about a year and a half ago and just completely devastate the property. Past where you can see there is where all the damage, the majority of the damage is done, and that area is completely changed. But the surrounding area around the cabin has remained pretty much the same for the most part. And we are very happy about that. Over here is where we do all of our sap boiling and you can see how close it is to the cabin and that was on purpose. This area still needs a little bit more development. As you can see, we do not have a roof over where we boil our sap. Last year we threw a tarp over top of the trees that are there or over top of the kind of the posts and stuff that we have set up and it worked fine. We do have plans to build an actual sugar shack, but that is something that's coming in the future because a sugar shack is actually really important because of how much time we spend here when we're boiling sap in the spring. So over here is our fire pit area, which is directly in front of the cabin. 
There's a picnic table here, and I think these are just everyone's fire poking sticks that are sitting in the edge of the fire. Directly ahead of me over here, there's another trail. So this trail down here leads all the way to the pond, and the pond is something that has been added after. It also brings deer down to drink there, and there's lots of frogs, no fish, because it's not big enough for that, but we do have other things that come down there and visit the pond. That's enough for outside though. That kind of gives you an idea of what the outside of the property looks like. So I think it's time to head inside and show you what the inside looks like. So this is inside the cabin. The fire's been going the whole time I've been outside, so it's actually nice and warm in here. The little wood stove that we have here actually does a really good job at heating the space up. It's probably helpful that the space isn't very big. I think the whole cabin altogether is roughly around 400 square feet or so. There has been an addition built onto the cabin, so it was not always 400 square feet. I would say it was probably around 200 square feet off the bat and I don't foresee any other additions being put on here. This room that we're in right now is the main room of the cabin. So this is where we cook, this is where we eat, this is where we play cards, this is where the fire is, this is where the pantry is, and there are two bunks in here. So originally when the cabin was built, the cabin was only this main room. So actually this doorway over here, it did not exist. So the wall went all the way across and we had two more bunks right here. So it was just one straight across bunk on the top and one straight across bunk on the bottom. Over here is where we have our wood stove. So it's kind of central to the whole cabin for the most part. This was actually not the original spot for the wood stove because we had beds here. It actually used to be over on the other side over there. And this was just the beds here. And then we had a little sort of plywood countertop thing here that we had a Coleman cooking stove on that we had to hook up the little propane canisters to. But this wood stove is basically what heats this entire cabin. So we have no other heat except for the wood stove. And it actually puts off a significant amount of heat and it does heat up in here quickly, obviously depending on the temperature outside. So these racks here are just what we use for storage. So extra pots and pans. The majority of these pots are actually used for collecting rainwater or snow to melt for water to wash the dishes and stuff. I also like to use these racks if I'm baking, if I have dough that needs to rise, it rises incredibly quickly here by the fire because it's so warm. We also use these ones here specifically for hats and mitts and scarves and stuff like that that we need to dry after being outside. Now I know some of you have mentioned before that this sort of wood stove area is not up to code. We know this. It has been like this for years. We're very cautious. The fire is not left going when nobody's here. There are heat shields behind it and on the floor. We do take the appropriate precautions not to burn the cabin down. That is obviously not what we want. So we know that this is not up to code and we are safe about what we have set up here. Over here is our kitchen. It is not much, but that's okay because it does more than what we need for space here for cooking. So over here we have our little propane stove and oven. It actually does the job quite well for what we use it for. The oven doesn't really get used a whole lot, mostly just at hunting season when we're cooking full meals here because we're here for such a long period of time. Rarely does it get used in the summer or in the spring or the fall because most of the time we're just cooking outside or we're cooking over the fire, but it is super helpful in the winter and during hunting season to be able to make a lasagna at home, bring it and throw in the oven and have it heat up. Over here is our pantry. So this is actually something that was never here before either. So basically all we keep in here is bowls, plates, cups, um, cast iron, some toilet paper and paper towel, a few staples like hot chocolate or coffee. We do sometimes keep like emergency things here like peanuts, but mostly we do not leave food in here because we do have mice here, which is to be expected because we are not here full time and we are in the middle of the bush. So naturally there are going to be mice here. Over here is just our sink, which there is a pipe underneath, which drains all the way outside. We don't fill up this sink and wash dishes in the sink. We always use this bucket. I don't know why it's just been it's just been a habit since forever, probably because we never used to have a sink and we just had a bucket that sat on the counter and you'd wash your dishes in the bucket and then dump the water outside. So I think we've just gotten in the habit of not using the sink and still continuing to use the bucket. This is just a little two shelf thing that we have our pots and pans on. 
And as you can see up here on the ceiling, there is a hole that's been patched. And this is actually where the wood stove was from the very beginning. So it was in the corner here, the beds were here, and there was a little fold out table on the side that we used to eat at. But things have definitely changed over time. So the wood stove is now over here in a more appropriate space. And we have this little counter space to cook on. Over here is where we sit down and we eat, where we play cards, where we, honestly, this is where we sit and do our planning for the next year. So the last few years, we've actually sat here and written out our plan for next year like our goals and our plan for homesteading and our gardening plans and our syrup plans. We've actually sat here and done that at New Year's. So this area is kind of important and it gets used for a lot of different things. You can see up here, these are our old propane lights. So we have copper coming inside, the propane comes in there and we've got these little lanterns here. There's knobs on the side. You basically just put your match up in here and turn the knob and it lights. It is not nearly as bright as these solar lights. This is more of like a dull sort of yellow light, whereas the solar lights are white. The solar lights are significantly brighter than this, but this actually was amazing to have when we stepped up from the lanterns. Over here, we just got some shelves that just have some little knick-knacky things on them. And then over here is where we hang our coveralls and then all of our sort of tools and saws and axes and brooms and stuff are just over there in the corner. Up here, there's a log which has nails all the way across it. And that's where we dry all of our winter clothes. So when we come in from outside, our coats, our snow pants, stuff like that, it gets hung up there to dry because it dries faster, obviously, because heat rises. So this is our propane fridge. This is also something that's new to us. We've never had a fridge here before. This is only in the last year, I think, or so that we've had the fridge here. The fridge is empty right now. It is not plugged in all the time. It's only plugged in if someone's here and we need it. Right now, because it's winter, we probably won't even use it because we don't really need to. It's cold outside, so you can just put a cooler outside. Super helpful in the summer when it's hot out. It just keeps everything nice and cold. This fridge is propane. Mostly this room is just more space for sleeping, but we do have a door over here and I'll show you what that's for. So this actually used to be a door to the outside. There actually used to be nothing on the other side of this door. You'd open the door and you'd step out and you'd be in the snow. But over the years, we've added what you would call a washroom or a bathroom. So in here, we've got a little toilet. So this is the toilet I was talking about outside. Basically, this toilet is used strictly for nighttime if you have to pee in the night. So you come in, you pee in here. There's usually a bucket of water that sits on the floor here. I don't have a bucket of water out right now because I'm not staying here. So you use the toilet, you pour the water in, and then you step on this little pedal and it opens the flap inside and takes everything out into the ground. So there's a hole under the cabin, which is where this goes. And that is the reason we do not use this toilet for all of our bathroom business. It's really just used for having to go pee in the middle of the night. We also can't use this right away when we arrive. So for example, today when I got here, even though I had to go to the washroom, I couldn't use the bathroom in here because it's so cold and nobody's been here. The flap actually freezes. So you can't even use this until we've been here long enough for the whole cabin to heat up and stay consistently warm for a few hours. If I were to use that now and step on that little flap, I'd probably break it and it would never work again. Over here, we have somewhat of a tiny little shower. So this actually never used to be here before either. So you can see here across the ceiling, there is a line that runs all the way across. That line goes all the way upstairs to a pot and the pot is where we put the hot water. And then the hot water, there's a tap inside here. So you turn the little spigot and then the water comes out of the pot from upstairs and basically you can have a little shower here. It's nothing fancy, but it does work. It's come in helpful a few times when we're here in the summer and we're splitting wood and it's hot and you're wearing bug spray and there's sawdust and you're sweating. Otherwise it doesn't really get used because when it's warm out, we just go jump in the lake and kind of rinse off in the lake. But this is actually helpful sometimes and it's nice to have just in case we need it. Over here, we have a little washing machine. That's just a backup emergency sort of thing in case we need it. Most of the time we bring enough clothes with us, but that's just here in case of emergencies. If we ever had to stay for an extended period of time, we have a way to wash our clothes and then we can just hang them up outside. It's super small, so you can't do a lot of laundry at once, but it is there as a backup if need be. So directly across from the bathroom door are these bunks. So there's two bunks on each side. So this sleeps another four people. So out front we can sleep two, in here we can sleep four, so we're already up to six people, which is more than enough for us. Nobody really sleeps up on these top bunks, so we kind of just use them for storage if we need to. Over here we just keep all of our snowshoes, 
And really this room is just for sleeping only. You can see up here, we do have more propane lights, but we don't use those anymore. Up here, you can see what our light situation used to be. And those are Coleman fuel lanterns. And you used to have to pump them up, get some pressure in there, light the little sock inside or the mantle, I think it's called. And then that was our light. You can actually see right here on the ceiling that there's a piece of wire hanging down. And that's where we used to hang our lanterns to light up this room. So it, it really didn't give you a lot of light, but it was better than nothing. So that's it for downstairs. It's time to head up and I'll show you what's up there. Before we go up, you can see all these little pictures and stuff on the wall here. These are things that the kids have done over time. So we always all come up here together at Thanksgiving. There's usually like 15 or 20 of us that come up at Thanksgiving. And each year the kids bring their holiday Thanksgiving craft that they made at school and tack it on the wall. So there is an abundance of Thanksgiving crafts here and the wall just continues to grow every year. So this is upstairs. It's really small and it's only for sleeping as well. So we've got a bunk here, two people can sleep on the bottom and then another two over here. So we can sleep five up here six downstairs so the place really technically sleeps 11. Here's the pot I was talking about that goes down to the shower. This is an enormous pot. I'm actually not sure how many liters or gallons it is but this is where we put our warm or hot water. We put it in there and then when you turn the spigot downstairs it goes through the tubing all the way downstairs and actually there is water in this. So there's water in it right now so somebody must have used it last time they were here. The tubing is all frozen but it'll thaw once the cabin warms up. Not really much to see up here Again, this is just for sleeping and it comes in handy in hunting season because it, the cabin fits a lot of people and the more people hunting, the better your chances are of getting something. So that basically wraps up the tour of the cabin. Hopefully that answers a bunch of your questions because there has been several questions about the cabin and I guess we've never really actually shown you or explained to you what this place is. So now you know. But if you do have any more questions, please leave them below and I will be sure to get to those. That wraps up this video for today. So thanks for joining me and can't wait to see you on the next one. Bye.